Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Devos. Pastor Jamie with you today. Hey, we're going to be together for the next four days. We're going to tackle the book of Colossians together. And so I'm excited about that. Let's jump into chapter one. I want to show you something that Paul does that I think is just fascinating. And I, and I, I, I believe today you're going to get something that'll and if you let it sink deep in your heart, it'll transfer, transform your life. And so let's get into that today. We're going to start in verse 15. Before we do that, though, I want to show you just technically that Paul starts his letter off like he does most of them. He, he kind of identifies himself. Then he goes into a prayer and a thanksgiving for the people that he's writing to. But then in verse 15 of chapter one, Paul just does something that I think is fascinating. <clears throat> what I want you to see is that Paul takes Christ in the, in the reader's mind, like the, the people that are reading this letter, he takes Christ in their heart and their mind and he just elevates Christ to the highest position ever. And, and it's so, so important. And that's what I wanna show you today. So verse 15, watch what it says. It says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created as in, in, and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things you can see and the things you we can't see, such as thrones, rulers, kingdoms, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Wow. How many of you would say that I get busy sometimes? I get distracted sometimes. I get I get off course sometimes. How many of you would agree with that? Life is always pulling something from us. It's always grabbing our attention, our focus. It's always trying to get our best energy and our best thought processes and 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 so if we're not careful Christ in our hearts and minds will take a lesser position because of everything else that we got going on in our lives. And Paul is just bringing us back to this place where he's going, no, 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 no. Christ is supreme. Make him your focus again. And that'll begin to line everything else up around you. So, so Paul does a beautiful job of just taking Christ and in our hearts and minds, putting him back in the place that he is. He's not in a secondary position. Christ is supreme. But sometimes in our lives and in our heart and our mind, we, we, we allow him or, or we, we, we take Christ and our relationship with him and we put it in a lesser place. And so Paul, from the get-go, is just saying, hey, Christ is supreme. He was there before it was created. Everything was created for him and through him. And he's supreme over the dead. He's supreme over everything. God was pleased to live in him, to reconcile everything back to himself. And that's awesome. And that's great. And, and if that's what you get from today's Devo, then you've gotten a lot. But there's more. <laughs> yeah, there's more. Look at what Paul does next. This is fascinating. Verse 21. He says, this includes you who were once far away from God. How many of you were at one time far away from God? When you were, this is what he says, you were his enemies, separated from him, watch this, by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And as a result, watch this, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him, watch this, without a single fault. Wow. 
So Paul's telling us that at one time you were separated from God. You were actually his enemy because of your evil thoughts and your evil actions. But because of what Christ did and the day you accepted what Christ did, Paul is telling us that that you are brought into his presence, God's presence. You were once his enemy. Now you're his friend. You've been brought into his presence. And listen to how Paul uses, listen to the language Paul uses. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Can you be honest and say some days I don't feel holy? Some days I don't feel blameless. Some days I don't feel like I don't have any faults. I feel like I have a lot of faults. I mean, if you would agree with that. But Paul is saying because of what Christ did, the way God sees you now is holy, blameless, and without a single fault. Wow. What a transformation when we can see ourselves like God sees us. Did you catch that? What a day of transformation when you can see yourself like God sees you. Oh my goodness, it'll change everything. That's a game changer, right? And so Paul says that because of what Christ did, you are now in God's presence and you are holy and blameless and you stand before him without a single fault. I think it's easier to live that way when you believe that way about yourself. Hmm. I wonder if Paul was putting Christ back in his rightful place in our hearts and minds, because when we allow Christ to be in a a secondary position in our hearts and minds, it, it, it prevents us from living holy and blameless and without a single fault. You see it? I'm telling you right now, I don't see myself like God sees me. I see myself better than I used to, but I still don't understand how God sees me the way he sees me. And all I can say is this, is that Christ's blood and his sacrifice on the cross is even bigger than I can understand right now. Because if it can take my sin, my fault, my blame, my evil thoughts and actions and position them and deal with them in such a way that God sees me as holy and blameless and without a single fault, then that means this, I don't fully understand how much God loves me and I don't fully understand how he sees me, which means this, that I don't fully understand the power of the blood of Jesus. But I want to, I wanna understand better, right? And I think we all should. So look at, look at how Paul continues. Verse 22, he says this, but you must, he uses this word must, like in a, it's an absolute. You must continue to believe this truth. Wow. And stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from this assurance you received when you heard the good news. Fascinating. I'm telling you right now, this is fascinating. I'm blown away. I'm, I'm sitting doing this Devo right now in awe of the great love that God has for me. I'm in awe of the power of the blood of Jesus. Like it's so powerful that it washes away all my stains, all my sin, all my guilt and shame. It takes me from being an enemy of God and positions me as a friend of God in his presence. Man. I wonder what would happen if we aggressively went after understanding this great love that God has for us and getting a hold of this deep truth of the power of Jesus's blood and all that happened because of his sacrifice. 
I wonder what would happen. I wonder how our lives would change. I wonder how our influence to this lost world would change. I wonder how much power we would walk in and how much confidence we would walk in now, knowing that the blood of Christ has cleansed me of every sin, every stain, every, every blame, every blemish, and that God loves me unconditionally. He loves me. Because Paul is saying, you need to walk in this assurance. You need to stand firm in it. You need to grab a hold of it and never let go. Why is he saying that? He's saying that because of this. We are on this planet to influence the lost. We are on this planet to preach the good news. We are on this planet for people to see Jesus living inside of us. That's assurance. Hmm. We shouldn't be wondering where we stand with God now that we've made a decision to accept Christ's sacrifice and his blood on the cross. We shouldn't be left wondering. We should know. And we should be walking in that confidence. Amen? So listen to what Paul says. I'm going to wrap it up with this. He says this, that you, because of what Christ has done, you are now in the presence of God. You are holy you are blameless and you stand before him without a single fault. Man, can we just plant our feet right there today? Can we just plant our lives in that today? Can we keep Christ as supreme in our lives, knowing that, that we're holy and blameless and we stand before him without a single fault? Come on. Whew. That's not something I have to do. That's just something I need to be. I just need to be that. Amen? Let's pray. That's a lot to pray about. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your heart. We thank you for your great, great, great love for us, God. We thank you that Christ is supreme over everything. And I pray that God, as the distractions of this world come and all the things that are tempting us and pulling against us, that God, we will never compromise Christ in our hearts and minds. That he'll always stay supreme in our hearts and our minds. And so God, help us with that today. And Lord, help us to walk in the assurance that we are that because of what Christ did and we accepted what he did, that we're now standing in your presence as your friends and we're holy and blameless without a single fault. Help us to live that way because when we live that way, God, it reflects your image, it reflects your glory, and it gives you praise in our lives. And so, Lord, do that work in us. Fill us with your spirit. Empower us, God, to live like we're loved unconditionally. And I thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow with chapter two. I'm excited. Love you.